Welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at the Seven Thunders. We've been following a series of celestial events that began with the Revelation 12 sign back in September 23rd, 2017. And from that event, flowed on into 30 moon cycles later, began the Seven Seals. After the Seven Seals, began the Trumpets. After the Sixth Trumpet, begins the seven thunders that's what we're going to be here talking about today if you haven't seen any of the other videos that pertain to the first seal or second seal it goes all the way to the seventh seal if you haven't seen them i highly recommend you watch those seals videos and you can even watch the trumpet videos after that and catch yourself up so you can watch this video here about the seven thunders so before we talk about the seven thunders and show them I want to first read part of Revelation chapter 10, and then we'll come back and have a chat about that. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So this part of the scripture is where I kind of got the clues um, for what to look for in the heavens. And it also helped me to really see the scroll. Uh, there was more indicators about the scroll itself. And going back all the way like to the beginning of the book of Revelation, and in, in now in chapter 10, and all this about the scroll, I gathered enough information about this scroll that I really wanted to expound upon it, and to the point where I was going to include it in this video, but that would be too large. And I just want to put this separate the scroll separate with the seven seals on it. So I'm going to make another video after this one talking specifically about the scroll, the seven seals. And I want to show how I see it in my mind and I want to expound upon it to show other people because there were some things that I was hung up on in the past that I was my eschatological view was wrong about it. And once I was able to see this, it unlocked a whole new string like a whole new theory that fits in way better than any other theory that I've thought of or heard of before. And perhaps there's people out there that already that already do know this. Uh, I just have never seen or heard it down to the point of getting this information stemming from the scroll itself. So I'm going to make this video and it'll be the next video. It'll probably be... Uh, a part two of the Revelation Unlocked called The Scroll. I think that's what I'm going to go with. Um, and I've had a hard time making this video because I've had the stuff in that video playing in my mind and trying to fit it in until I finally decided I need to divide this and make a video of its own because there's just too much meat in it and it, and it needs to be looked at because I think it's going to help a lot of people in their eschatological views of the scroll and there's because a lot of big group out there that think that then the sixth seal is open this is the the wrath the day of the lord so to speak and that's when they're raptured and you could argue that well maybe they're right maybe they're wrong but with this new view of the scroll you can it'll help them out so much and if they if they'll actually receive it you know that's another thing too when you've been thinking one way for such a long time when you have something new presented if you've been clinging to this view for a long time it's hard to let go and accept something new so i hope it hope it goes over well but back to this video the seven thunders there was a clue that i got from this scripture when he heard the thunders the seven voices um, he told them he told them to seal it up so to me when I was looking for something to look for in the heavens because I started to read scripture and I try to find something that I can 
grasp onto tangible that I could look for. And this one was kind of humorous because I'm looking for something that you can't see. And in the Jewish culture, it became evident that this is kind of tied in with the Rosh Kadesh, with the new moon. You cannot see it. So they wait for it. They wait for the sliver of it. So, but that's not the part I was looking for, not the sliver. I was looking for the part that is invisible, which is the new moon. And the moon is the fastest luminaries in the heaven. It does move. It could move through a constellation in a day. So it's it's constantly moving. In, in, the, in the seventh seal, where the moon was in front of the, the, the lion's mouth, it moves out of the way very quickly, right? In, in just over an hour, it's, it's the whole moon has moved out of the way. So the moon is the fastest luminary up there. And if it's invisible, it's really hard to detect where it is. So, but we have technology, we have Stellarium. We can see the invisible now in this day and age. We can see the invisible. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the invisible and... It's incredible because when you look at this, it fits in like the series of the trumpets. Only Not only that, but it happens right after the sixth trumpet. It happens. The new moons fit in. The earth, the sea, rivers and fountains, sun, the beast, Euphrates rivers, and the air. It fits in that pattern immediately. And there's a couple other goodies that, that are in here too. So anyway, we'll get going. Uh, we'll show you now um, the first thunder. So we're going to start here in the sixth trumpet. We have a full moon, sixth trumpet. Full moon's over here, 100% phase. Okay, notice the date. This is four years exactly from the first seal. The sixth trumpet lands on the exact same day that the first seal landed on, back in 2019, December 26. So it's, <laughs> it's really coincidental, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to go out forward, and it's 16 days until we get to the first thunder. So here we go. And there it is, 16 days from the sixth trumpet to get to the first thunder. It's invisible. You can't see the new moon. And hence, this is the first thunder. So it's in the rider on a horse, the constellation of a rider on a horse. And the first seal was the rider on a white horse, which went forth conquering and to conquer the earth. And we've equated that to be this constellation equating earth. And there's a pattern of the earth, the sea, rivers and fountains of water, the sun, the beast, Euphrates River, and the air. We get all that from Revelation chapter 16, the part where the vials are poured out onto the earth. Okay, and it's this lands, this first thunder lands on January 11. So you have a 1, 1, 1. And that's very interesting. And we're going to go back now. We'll have a talk about this. So that was the first thunder. Uh, interestingly enough, it landed on January 11, uh, 111. And as you know, when we did that video about the 137, um, there was some patterns in that number. One of them was the number 111. And you can get 111 from adding 37 plus 37 plus 37. And you can also get the 111 with adding 37 and then flip the 37 to get a 73, add them together and add the 1. So it's, it's pretty interesting that it lands on such a date as that because my friend Stan, he would call those uh, God winks or God nods. And it's like a kind of like just like a nod that, you know, you're on the right track, so to speak, when you have some uh, numbers that just kind of it happens you get the feeling more often when it's consistent it's not just once in a while but consistently you get these numbers popping up you know with the 137 the fine uh, structure constant that that even scientists are baffled by the fact that this number is everywhere right so and just like the golden rectangle in the, in the fibonacci sequence these numbers 
in creation, God used them in creation, and they pop up all the time. And when you're doing something like this and these numbers are popping up, it just kind of gives you that feeling like, yeah, it's like a, I don't know, a nudge of an encouragement that you're kind of on the right track. But I, those those numbers, like even the 111, by the time we're done this video, I don't think we'll even need those little tiny um, markers because the things that we're going to see here coming up, it's it's pretty amazing. And yeah, to me, it, it some of them just really blew me away. So uh, that was the first thunder. Let's go look at the second thunder. Okay, so we're here at the first thunder. We're going to go forward until we get to the second thunder. Now, inter interestingly enough, the second thunder here is going to be a three-day event. And this kind of follows the theme of the group, the second group, because the second group, the red the rider on a red horse, was a three-day event. And then with the trumpets, there was two full moons in there, which kind of set the precedent. Uh, there was a moon and a blue moon in August. So it was a longer uh, span of time. And this one here does not fail to fit this structure. And it's kind of interesting. So we're going to go forward here day by day. Um, follow this moon around until it gets to a certain point here. Right here. Now I'm going to stop the moon from moving even though it's 16 like percent left here and I'm gonna show you this alignment now I took a snapshot of this earlier we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison and we're gonna talk about this after uh, in our chat but this alignment it when I seen this I, I knew where I've seen this before and if you might know too by looking now but this is three days um, before the actual new moon okay so i'm going to bring this back in so remember this date this date is also the one year anniversary of the seventh seal so it's you just can't make this stuff up it's uh yeah one year anniversary of the seventh seal it's the 37th day of the year and it's creating this um i'll just mention it now this mercury mars and venus and the sun it's all evenly spaced just like it was uh almost identical to the Revelation 12 sign and it's but over here we had Jupiter but now we have the Saturn I did a side-by-side -side snapshot we'll show you later but uh, for now we're just gonna go forward three more days until the new moon is in the right spot and that is well oh, let's center it that is there okay so this is a new moon zero percent and it is on february 9th three days after february 6 which created an identical um star formation as revelation 12 sign it just this one just blew me away and uh yeah I'll, i'm gonna read some scripture about this one too because i think there's another connection so let's go back and we'll talk about this one so that was the second thunder and i i want to go back in time a little bit like a few months back to the time when i decided to go look for the trumpets because i really didn't think they would actually be in the heavens as well until the schumann resonance anomaly happened which prompted me to have a look because it, it's related to sound, and I know that the seventh seal was a 7.8 um, earthquake, and I just, I thought back then, why not 7.7, 7, but 7.8, and I thought, well, that's an interesting number, because this is the seventh seal, next is the trumpets, and Schumann Resonance starts the base layer of 7.8 um, hertz, so it's, it, it's fitting in that respect, so that got me thinking on that terms and by so i thought okay maybe the schumann resonance anomaly will will have the spikes for because i was thinking trumpet one will be like a, a massive single spike 
and trumpet two will be two massive spikes. These are what my thoughts were back then. So I never thought to like I thought I thought I was done with looking at the stars in Stellarium. I was going to be looking in the Schumann Resonance Anomaly for the next one, or just be looking at the Earth for like you know the fires for the first trumpet, and something like uh, a burning mountain cast of the sea for the second, stuff like that. So I thought that's how I was going to have to look for them. But June 18, 2023, the Schumann Resonance Anomaly happened. It really prompted me that maybe. I should have a look in the heavens to see if something's up happening you know something's about to begin uh, I don't know it just prompted me well there's a couple of things that maybe I'll talk with another time like uh, personally on, on that day but uh, yeah so for this I went in the heaven I, I was looking in the heavens and I found the full moons landed perfectly on the areas the constellations that represent the earth, the sea, the rivers and fountains, the sun, the beast, the Euphrates River, and the air. And they were landing perfect full moons right after this anomaly. And I just thought, wow, how convenient is this? So uh, I thought, okay. So I thought, well, I can't announce it because I, I thought we need, you know, a, one or two witnesses. We'll just sit back and see what happens, so to speak. So, so when I when I did finally announce it, I thought, okay, we'll announce it. When we'll just put a question mark there, and you know, it's like, is this it? Let's have a look together, right? So, we shared it. Let's have a look together. Put a question mark. If you notice, if you look on that video now, I took away the question mark and just put an exclamation mark there because I thought, yeah, this is it. Because at the back of that time, I also went forward in time to see, you know, if the trumpets are there, why not the thunders? Because it's like, you know, trumpets our sound thunders our sound maybe they'll be there too so that's how my how my brain works <laughs> so i just thought oh this is, i'll go with it and start looking and amazingly enough i thought okay i'll have a look so after the sixth trumpet the new moons were landing in those areas of revelation chapter 16 where the vials are poured out you know the earth the sea the rivers and fountains of water all the way down to the air so they were hitting there i'm like wow isn't that interesting and then it, you know i got thinking wow you can't see new moons and you can't see the thunders so that's a that's a pattern right that's a pattern though they have something in common here so i thought oh this is going to keep that on and keep that in mind for for later on because if these trumpets start to happen in, in them then yeah you got the you got the thunders kind of waiting in line so to speak so yeah so here we are now and we're looking at them so i've had time to observe them uh, and i seen that one pattern on uh, no, uh february 6 which coincidentally is the first anniversary of the seventh seal where this formation is there you have the sun and then mercury mars and venus spaced out perfectly just like the revelation 12 sign and then just off to the left of the sun were Jupiter would have been is Saturn now and then I noticed something and it matched scripture you know I thought wow this th is this this is is it could this be it so anyway I'm going to put a side by side up on the screen I'm going to read some scripture and I'm going to do that right now so here's a side by side the uh, picture on the right is the Revelation 12 sign September 23rd 2017 the one on the left is february 6 2024 and it's three days before the second thunder this date is also one anniversary of the seventh seal so it's amazing and uh, three days from there is the actual second thunder so got that three day gap and just like you had with the second seal three day from the uh the moon triangle jupiter and then the titus conjunction three days like later so, so it's just those things to me are, are connectors like there's like a pattern there but this star formation was just it was just amazing so yeah i'm gonna go back uh read some scripture now and then we'll come back and look at this picture again and i'll read more scripture 
so I had the side-by-side -side picture there. I wanted to quickly show you that, explain a little bit of it. Now I want to read you some scripture here now. I'm going to put the side-by-side -side picture back up and read another scripture. The reason why I want to do this was because these are the scriptures that are helping me put all this into context to, to how I see the February 6, 2024 pattern and the way I see it. I'm going to explain to you how I think this fulfills part of what is written in Revelation in the heavens. Not necessarily what is happening on earth right now, but it may. We don't know when that time comes. I don't know. But I, I do know what I see coming and what I see in the constellations and what I see in scripture. I made a connection. So that's why I want to read this. Just to give you my th the foundation of my thinking so that you know where I'm at and hopefully you can um, take this in and at least see where I'm coming from. Whether you agree with me or not, that's one thing, but at least you'll know where I'm coming from. All right, so I'm going to read this now and it is in Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 to 20. And I'll read that and then I'll put the side by side up. Okay, so it says, And I turned to see the voice of that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like, like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto the fine brass, as if they burned in a, in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So read that. I'm going to put the side by side up. And I'm going to read another scripture. And we'll come back and have a talk about it. So here's the side by side picture again. The Revelation 12 sign on the right. And the February 6, 2024. The one year anniversary of the seventh seal. And it's also three days before the second thunder. So I'm going to read the scripture now. It's Revelation chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was, as it were, the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered. And write them not. So that was verses 1 to 4. Now, this scripture, when when I read it, and when I seen this, and I also had the knowledge of, of this one thing, that the, of the 12 constellations up there, the seagull is the only constellation that represents both the earth being the goat part and the sea being the fish part. It's the only constellation that has his characteristics of the earth and the sea. 
And in the in chapter one of Revelation, it talks about the stars being angels of the seven churches. So in this type of thinking, I think, okay, if these stars that we're looking at are the angels and they represent angels, then if this sun was facing us, it would have its right foot, so to speak, in the sea, on the back end of the seagull, and his left foot would be on the, the goat. So one foot would be on the land, one foot would be in the sea. And this is the way I, I see this. And I thought, well, this is kind of interesting because the first thunder just happened and then this happened. And it's it's like an introduction to me to this at, at this time. And it, and it also has this um, the lineup that, that grabbed my attention. Because this was the first thing I noticed was this lineup, the Revelation 12 um, constellation lineup that I seen, I first noticed. And then I noticed um, that it, the sun was in the sea goat, which was like half earth and half sea. And then I, then I remember the scripture that matched up with that. And I went and read that. And it was later that I realized that this date actually landed on the one and one, the first anniversary of the seventh seal. So I thought all this together combined was very profound. And yeah, I wanted to share this because to me, it feels like this in the heavens could be at this time period because it, it fits really very well at this time. So I'm going to go back and um, yeah, we'll just have a, a short talk about this. So that's how I felt um, when I saw that in the heavens and it, it triggered a memory about scripture, grabbed the scriptures, read it looked at it and I thought this really is perfect timing for this to happen when I'm looking at the thunders right so I thought <laughs> I just I, I just <laughs> I just thought wow and then I noticed later on that you know okay oh this is the second thunder and it's like oh yeah the second seal was also uh, a longer one and the second trumpet was longer and this is the second thunder and it's kind of like a longer sign so that's the way i see it and anyway that is um the second thunder in a nutshell so we'll go now and we'll look at the third thunder so we'll start here in the second thunder we're going to go ahead in time and just like the second trumpet it had two full moon cycles well this second thunder is no different it has two new moon cycles it is longer just like the trumpets and it and it fits with the pattern because the second seal uh, was longer than the, all the other seals it was a three-day event where all the other seals were just one day event so it, it does fit that pattern as well so as this second new moon cycle ends up here in the constellation of the fish the fish represents the rivers and fountains of water which is the third group and when it gets here there is a total eclipse which is very interesting as well and as you will see it fits another pattern so all these converging coincidences <laughs> if you want to call them that it, it gets to the point where it's like yeah this doesn't look like a coincidence anymore it really looks like it is meant to be. So we will go and talk about this. So that was the third thunder. So in the third group now, we've had an eclipse in the first seal, which helped create that black horse because it was a blackout eclipse. It created the rider and horse being black with the scales. That was the third uh, the rider, right? The third seal and then we had the trumpet we just had this on October 14th and it was an annual eclipse and now in April 8th this is going to be another eclipse it's you can just see like how all this is kind of fitting together and like this in itself just helps to like tie everything together 
And for me, it just it added more confirmation. It's like, yeah, this this lines up. And if there was going to be um, thunders in the heavens and these kind of match up right after the trumpets, it, it sure looks like this is it. And the odds of this itself, like they were, they're just astronomical. I mean, I stopped calculating the odds after the fifth seal because... Uh, the exponents was like getting 64 plus whatever was already on the calculators, so adding up all those zeros. If, if if it was still doing it, this whole screen would be just be with a number that I wouldn't know how to even pronounce the number, but it'd be full of zeros and all that. And uh, yeah, I just just thought you know this is at the point where it's it's in the realm in my mind. It's in the realm of like this is impossible. Only God could do this, you know. And in my mind and my heart, it's like I just say glory to God, like oh, glory to God, that uh, that He has given us ability to to find this out, to help us. I I don't know how much of a help it will be because we'll have to talk about that eventually. It's like how do we, uh, with all this information, um, we should talk about this eventually about uh, time and yeah and and just. So we're, we'll put that thought on hold. We'll have a talk about that um, in the near future. But for now, um, we'll continue looking at um, these signs. So that was the third thunder. And we will... Uh, oh, I wanted to show you the eclipse paths before we go and look at the fourth thunder. So the first eclipse path, it went on December uh, 14th, 2020. It went through the bottom part of South America. Uh, the second eclipse pass with which is the uh, trumpet it went through uh, North America Central America and South America and the next eclipse on the third thunder goes through North America so the eclipse shadows have gone through North America twice um, Central America once and um, South America twice so that's really interesting in itself. We could probably do a whole other video about um, that fourth part of the Earth that my friend Stan talked about. Um, it's it's very interesting uh, to say the least. But it's time. I just have to work with the time I have. If I get around that time, because a lot of other videos I want to get to uh, as well. But um, if I get the time, I'll do it. If I don't, forgive me. You can do your own research on this as well. I just wanted to put that out there as well so yeah so that sums up this third thunder and I want to go show you now the the fourth thunder so we'll start here the third thunder we'll go forward in time until we reach the ram the new moon in the ram right here which the ram represents the sacrifice which we know is jesus he is the male lamb which is a ram and he was sacrificed for us so this equates it as the sun and we have uranus and jupiter here jupiter was also used in the revelation 12 sign where jupiter spent 40 weeks in the womb of the virgin and came out and jupiter represented um jesus christ in that manner we also have venus here who is also known as um, the bright morning star so we have some indicators here of um, jesus and the sun right so in a spiritual sense this represents the sun and yeah so we will go and talk about that so that was straightforward the fourth thunder in the ram which represents um, male lamb sun the sun and they had some indicators there with um, Jupiter Venus and that happened on May 7th so and before I forget I wanted to mention something it's uh, I wanted to mention this a, a while back but I'll mention it now since I remember um, please grab a pencil or pen and paper and write the dates down for the seals the seven seals um the seven trumpets or the six trumpets and then the seven thunders uh, the reason why i'm saying this because if if the internet was to go down 
um, the video is gone or the power goes down and then it comes back up but it comes back up a little different it's all of a sudden um, Christian contents disappeared for some reason you know then you won't be able to get to that information um, so yeah I just say that now uh, because I know the world is gonna has to go through eventually um, something big to get people's attention um, and it has to go through a bit of chaos because without the chaos when the Antichrist comes on the scene um, there won't be anything to rescue so he's like going to be like the hero at that time and he needs there to be some sort of chaos to save people right that's the the idea because people will look to this person and as a savior so to speak so the, it, what are they going to save them from if there's nothing really big going on right so i believe that it, something big could be like power outage for like globally for a while or internet globally for a time to the point where it causes a lot of chaos problems and no one knows what's going on around the world it's anybody's guess because they can't get news right and then when it, it comes back on you know if there was chaos then you're gonna have this anti-hero you know so to speak that's gonna rescue the world will I just so I'm putting this out here just to, to say jot these down because as we go further if you read um, chapter 11 of Revelation here it it jumps into um, the uh, it starts to talk about um, the two witnesses so and yeah that very well could be um, us right the people uh, I've always thought this I thought well if one of them was um, Christians the Gentile Christians and the other would be the Messianic Jews um, that's the way I see it and uh, if you don't see it that way that's fine but uh, I just think that as a witness um, the dates and stuff could help with all this because if things happen the more information the more things that we can show people um, at that time if you can you know, if, if Stellarium gets up and running again, you can show people <clears throat> the seals and the heavens, the, the trumpets, the thunders. If some people need that, even if one person, even if it helped one person, I do think it's worth it. You know, I think it's worth it that it could help one person. So say that, take it with a grain of salt, take it to the Lord. Um, yeah, pray about it. So that being said, I'm going to go in and uh, show you now um, the fifth thunder. Okay, so we're back here. The fourth thunder. We're gonna go forward in time till we get to the next new moon, and that will land in the area we call the beast, which is the bull. And we'll just bring this forward, the moon into the sun here. All right. So we have. Here, the new moon in the beast. It's pretty fascinating that it lands on the six month, six day. And if you add the last two digits of the year together to get another six, this actually lands on this. And you have the sun, and the moon, you have Venus, Mercury, you have Jupiter, and Uranus. So you have six luminaries in this as well so we're getting this theme of sixes which in the beast it's kind of ah it's <laughs> you can't make this up that's for sure so yeah so here it is here june 6 2024 um i actually have not checked out to see if venus I know right here it looks like it Venus might be being occulted by the sun 
but it's like right on top of it. I'm zooming in more. I don't know how close this gets to an occultation. Um, I could probably do an update when I look that up, but just, it's another time thing. Um, so I just wanted to get this out here. So yeah, so you have this new moon right here with the sun, Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, Uranus, six luminaries on June 6th, which is six month. Yeah, here it is. So well, let's go and we'll talk about that. So that's the fifth thunder. Unbelievable. Like just who can do this? You know, six luminaries in in the beast um, on the sixth month, sixth day of 2024. Last two digits, add them up to get another six. I, I just can't. Like to, to me, it's just like what are the odds here? Like if I was calculating odds right now, that one would be a massive. A massive one because like the the new moon coming there with the sun because as soon as the new moon comes back around again the sun's gone out of the beast so so you had that one day of the year that i could land on um the six month six day but to have it land on a day where the last two digits end up as the add them together two and a four and end up being a six and then you pile on the fact that there's six luminaries in there all at the same time like those odds are just staggering alone just in that one little thunder right so yeah only i i just think it's like oh only god can do this only because it just keeps like you know consistently like consistently doing these things <laughs> it's like only who can do like only god can do these things glory to god that's my mind glory to god my heart glory to god so yeah all right, that was the fifth seal. <laughs> let's let's go and look at the at the sixth one. So we're at the fifth thunder, and we're gonna go forward until the next uh, new moon. The next new moon will be in the great river Euphrates in the heavens. So here we are here. And we have it's on July fifth. And it's in the Euphrates River, and we have um, Venus with us here. So that is it. Pretty straightforward right here in the Euphrates River. Okay, we'll go and talk about it. So that was the sixth thunder. It was pretty straightforward. I think of all the thunders, this was one of the ones that was like, call like ordinary. <laughs> Uh, I haven't looked too deeply in um, the meaning of Venus being there. I just I'm still overwhelmed by the uh, the fifth thunder to be honest. And so yeah, that's the sixth thunder. And so we will go now and uh, look at the seventh thunder. Here we have the sixth thunder. We'll go forward, moving the new moon over to the seventh thunder right beside the beehive cluster and it's within the crab which I think is an eagle which I've talked about um, in prior videos so I'm just gonna zoom in here we got the uh, the beehive cluster here in the circle the moon and the Sun creating this uh, triangular shape and that is that for the seventh thunder so we'll go and talk about that so that was the seventh thunder right beside the beehive cluster and beehive cluster makes a triangle with the moon and the sun beehive cluster represents the air that we were looking for to for the pattern in uh, revelation 16 and it ends with the seventh group being the air I think that I know it's in the constellation of the crab, but I still think it's the eagle. Uh, some other people have thought it's also could be a sheepfold, and that's not bad because that's where the sheep would be gathered, right, and, and the, at the last uh, day, so to speak. But I still think the eagle is good too because it comes down and grabs the fish, and if the church is the fish, and then getting snatched. So that's I like that too. So because it, I think it's the eagle. I just want to read. Um, 
Uh, Psalm 91 is a little excerpt there where it, uh, it talks about being under the wing. And I just that's how I feel that God is represented sometimes in, in his word. So I'll just read that, the first part of it. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. And that's, it's one of my favorite psalms. I know it's a lot of people's favorite psalm too, but it reminds me of that part and of the Lord being an eagle paints a beautiful picture. I like it. I just think that's, I think it's an eagle up there. I just do. And uh, yeah. So there's a pattern in the dates I want to talk about. I'll talk about all the thunders together, but I want to talk about the pattern in the dates. Um, I don't want to talk about first. I'll talk about, I'll talk about the thunders on a whole first and I'll talk about the dates after. So the thunders on a whole, it's the third group. And the first group being the, the seals, second group being the trumpets, and then this one being the thunders. And the more data that we collect, we look at, the, the more possibilities are going to be, uh, if there's going to be a pattern, we'll see one arise. And I do see this. I, I see this in, in a few in a few ways. And um, the starting days of the seals, um, the seals was on the 360th day of the year, which is like 360 degrees in, in a circle. And I, I was, I was, I had a video planned to make one to talk about God and how he creates everything in circles. I'm still going to do that one, God willing, if I have time. So that, anyway, that was on the, the first day was on the 360th day of the year was the first seal. Um, the first day of the, the trumpet, that was on um, seven three, and that's one of the Lord's numbers, like the one three seven of seventy three, and the seventh seal was on the thirty seven. And we did the hybrid eclipse video, and then we have this one starting on um, one eleven, which is another uh, connection with the numbers one one one. You know the thirty seven thirty seven thirty seven, or the seventy three plus thirty seven plus one. So we have we have some numbers connected with the the starting dates, and then. Um, with the group of ones and then we have the group of twos which is like the second seal second trumpet second thunder we have an extended period of time in each one we have the three-day event and the seal the two moons and the trumpet and this new one here the uh almost a copy of the revelation 12 sign in the heavens three days before the actual start date of the second thunder that's amazing it just it really is amazing. And we have the fulfillment of Scripture, in my opinion, of the angel standing on one foot in the sea and one foot on earth. I really think that that uh, fulfills it for the for uh, prophecy in the heavens. Uh, for that part, I, I really do think so. And then we have the third group with um, the third seal being the black horse. There was an eclipse, black hood eclipse, to make the horse black. And then we just had the uh, third um, trumpet just in October here, and that one was another eclipse, an annular one, and the shadow fell upon North, Central, and South America, and it landed on all the, the rivers, and especially the Amazon tributaries. It was amazing. Uh, and then we have this third thunder going to happen on another eclipse. On April 8th, which is amazing. So three eclipses. So there's a pattern in that one. And um, the fourth one, it's the, the Jupiter and Venus there is another, like the sun. And we know that the ram is, is um, like the male lamb. The Lord Jesus is a sacrifice. He, he is the lamb, right? 
So that's been an, um, everyone, it's a special one. It's like a miracle one that the fourth one, you know, the green comet coming through it is because it's just, it wouldn't have worked unless there was something pale green go through that at that time. And it did. So it's just, yeah, this stuff, it, yeah, <laughs> blows my mind. And then we have, um, the fifth thunder, um, we have that six luminaries in the bull or the beast on six months, six day and the 2024, and it could make a six, six, six. And yeah. And now I'll talk the segue. Now I'll talk about the date pattern because, um, it really looks like it's pointing towards that day being a big day because of this date pattern. You have the six month, six day on the fifth thunder on the fourth thunder. You have it on May 7th. So it's a five, seven on the sixth thunder. You have it on July 5th. So it's a seven, five. It's a mirror image of each other. Five, seven, seven, five. And if you go to the third thunder, it's on May 8th, which is a four, eight. And the seventh thunder is on August 4th, which is an Eight, four. It's a mirror image. And if you look at the picture here, you can see that it goes a mirror image is four, eight, five, seven, six. And then on the way down, it's a six, seven, five, and an eight, four. It's a mirror image of each other. And it's like a top of a pyramid. You know, it's pointing like this is like to me, it it indicates like this is the tipping point. It reminds me of the story of Joseph, where he had seven good years. And then seven bad years. If I was to look at all these and say, where would you say is the the tipping point? Uh, this one looks like it is. This one looks like it's, you know, it's there's something. It just seems like something big is going to happen that once this happens, everything's going to be different, you know. And I know there's a lot of things happening on Earth that could point in that direction. I know a lot of things already have happened that have pointed in this direction. But this is the, what I see. This is how I see it. I just see this pattern here, and it's like pointing at this date. And when I, when you look in the heavens on that date, there's something, to me, it's something like you don't often get six luminaries in a spot together that tight, that that tight like we've had luminaries in signs but they're usually spread over a couple of constellations like the revelation 12 sign is spread over a couple of constellations arguably arguably three with um the scales there and then you had the the rider on a black horse where it spread out too with a lot of luminaries there but you have six luminaries in one constellation that is that is yeah on on that day the six six day so I just think that's important and it stands out to me and we'll probably um, do, a, do a video about that. And when I expound on some of these things, I don't know if um, I could do like a live stream and do question answers or something like that. I don't know if you guys would want something like that. I'm just trying to figure out how I do this in my house. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it's a possibility. I don't know. Let me know what you think of that. And uh, because I wouldn't mind, like, you know, chatting, uh, getting, you know, it's like iron sharpens iron, the man sharpens man, right? And I wouldn't mind chatting about some of these ideas and seeing what you guys think, because I know what I, you know, I know what I think. And, uh, but I can also do this in the community section too, which I've been uh, trying to do and um, reveal some of my thoughts out there. And I'm gathering some of your thoughts and it's good. It's good because it helps me too. Because when I see so many people thinking one way, I'm like, wow, okay, that, that's interesting. Because I might be thinking one way, and the way I'm thinking, I'm thinking that everybody thinks that way too. And then, then you find out it's like, no, they don't. <laughs> you're you're a, you're at left field, Eric. <laughs> so I see, okay, okay, that's that's good. Because you know, I need sharpening. You know, just like we all do. You know, we need we need some sharpening. So. I don't know if you're into that, but uh, I do want to make some other videos. The next one I want to do is about the scroll. I want to do um, an, a little bit of an in-depth study on on the scroll and how I see it and um, explain some stuff that I think is going to be pretty good and it'll be a good one to share with other people. And I think some people will see this and they might not like it, 
I don't see it now. They might not like it because uh, a lot of people with eschato- eschatology, their end times thinking is it's pretty set, and it's because I know, I know, I know too. I'm I'm guilty of that too. My mind was set, and you weren't gonna you weren't gonna change my mind, and I don't think my mind would have changed unless until the Lord showed me the this the seals and stuff. And I, and I wrestled, I wrestled with that because it's like, okay, <laughs> okay. And then I'm like, all right, well, what do I do now? And I, you know, after a lot of prayer and just asking some questions, like the one question was, what would I want done? You know, if my neighbor had information that I could help be possibly benefited by, would I want my neighbor to share? And that's basically what it came down to. It's like, yeah, share this. It's share this so i thought okay i'll share it and we'll see what happens because at that point i only knew the the four horses right so i'll we'll share it and uh through prayer and i think uh, maybe possibly obedience that uh god kept showing showing more and uh praise god for that and I'm so thankful for it I'm thankful i can share it with you guys and yeah it's what this kind of saying all that to say that i believe that we're being shown this f- the main reason we're showing all this i think is just for the urgency to let us know that time is short we can do kind of sometimes when i work things backwards it's like okay you can work things easier if you work things backwards and it's like if we were all in heaven like right now and we all were talking and we said if we could go back to earth for one more year one more year what would we do different well take this as your year <laughs> you know at the like i'm that's what i'm doing and and uh, i'm not saying that we're going up in a year so don't get me wrong because it, it could be a long time it could be a short time i can i can see these things in different ways and that's why i want to talk to other people about it i've talked to a lot of people I've heard a lot of info and I've given out a lot of info. Like I've tried to sharpen with other people and I've, I've learned a lot. And sometimes it doesn't make me change my point of view, but it'll create a new, a, a new um, theory and, 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 a, you know, a possible other timeline, you know, um, as my friend Stan would say, God's end time is probably written on a rubber band and he can, you can just keep on stretching it to, you know, and it'll fit, right? Because it's it's all written on this stretchable rubber band. And 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 I sometimes think, you know what? Maybe there is things that um are influenced by what we do, by what we do now. Maybe things are influenced by that. So that being said, we could do our part, you know, and uh be part of this great harvest. I, I really do think that. This is probably one of the greatest harvests this earth will ever see, and we can be part of it. We can go out there and spread the word, tell people about our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, what he did for us. Because there's a lot of people out there that don't know. They really don't. And and the, and the more the more I realize this, the more astounded I am. Because when I grew up, everybody knew. When you talked about Jesus, everybody knew. But now, you know, it's it's different. Some people don't even never even heard of that name in their life. They just thought it was a swear word on a Hollywood movie. So it's like, wow, amazing. So yeah. So I believe all this is for a purpose. And I think we can do uh the best we can do with the amount of time we have left. Right. So that's all you can do. Sometimes all you can do is all you can do. And that's that's just the way it is. So I really appreciate being able to share this with you guys. I really do. And it's, uh, yeah, so I thank you for popping by and being able to share this with you. God bless you. I love you all very much. And until the next video.